Shabbat Shalom. Wir, wir fahren heute fort mit der Predigtenreihe, die wir letzten Samstag angefangen hatten. Die, die Reihe nennt sich zum eigenen wahren Ich. Mhm. Ähm, auf Deutsch heißt es Befreiung zum wahren Ich. Die kommenden Samstage werden wir darüber sprechen. Äh, vergangenen Samstag war sozusagen die Einführung. Wenn ihr das verpasst habt, dann findet ihr alles im Internet, auf YouTube, da steht alles. Ihr könnt reinhören, das anschauen, Fragen stellen. Eine kurze Zusammenfassung. Um, write to us if you have questions. Man has been created to be in a community. And then automatically um, we expect to be accepted in the society. And in order to give the consciousness that this person is accepted, he has to, he or she has to feel that uh, he or she is meaningful to all the others. And for each person, this is important to feel that and this is uh, with every person, in every person that he feels important or meaningful. I'm meaningful, I'm worth while for this or that group or congregation and for the whole of the world or for this or that group or society. This is a very important part of the soul of every human being. The, where the view of the world of, or of Western society, where we live, is very much um, filled with the humanism, is very much um, characterized by humanism. Man is above all. Humanism. Uh, things that man is standing above all. <clears throat> and this society is um, attaching so much importance to lifting up human being, to lifting up man. This is a humanistic uh, society that is rejecting the idea of God. But in this way, um, the human being is um, even put lower. Mm. 
um, by looking by looking at the human being as an accident as an event that happened by accident or a being and this um, makes a, makes man similar uh, to, uh, to, to, to animals or to stones or to a tree or something like that. It, um, it makes them similar to the creation that is surrounding us. Of course, we try to everything so that men feel well for the well-being and the society is characterized by the love of self or caring for other people we try this very much in this society but um, the value of men all the worth of men is uh, getting deep down. You are like an elephant, or like a wasp, or like a bird. Not more. Or a little dog, or a cat, or a um, parrot, or a tree. Because you are a product of nature and of accident, but you are a product a little bit more developed than these things that we have mentioned. A product that is thinking, suspecting that we should care for others. Man is not going to God in order to find out the, uh, the truth about himself. Man does not go to God in order to find out uh, who he really is and what is his value. Where should he still go? Should he go to an elephant? To a parrot? To whom can human being turn? This inner longing, this in inner need is in every human being. Uh, where does man find the answer? He finds the answer with other human beings, other people. Man is looking for other people who, um, who give meaning to himself. So this is so important for people, for men, to, to feel that he is important. <coughs> By searching his true um, self. And the result is that the person starts thinking. I am like others, as others see me. So, as you see me, that's how I am. Not necessarily as he or she sees me, that's how I am, but... In his subconscious, the man is looking for the source. I find my importance or my meaning with so and so, this or that person. But our worth and our value does not depend on uh, the on behavior of other people or how they um, refer to us or how um, but uh, from the word of God we try to do something 
we try to adjust to something. And we try to deserve a good opinion about us, among others. We define our lives um, by watching others and depending on others, on other opinions. And our behavior is the result of what we think about ourselves, finally. As you think about yourself, you will also act and behave. Our feelings and our uh, view about ourselves com are complementary. It's like a circle. I want to be accepted by others. I want that others think positively about me, about myself. Because as people think about me, it's uh, defining who I am or is um, influencing me according to what others are saying about me. It's defining who I am and it's like a, a circle. I act so that other people think positively about me. And if others think positively about me, I repeat my behavior. Because my opinion about myself, how I view myself, is depending on what others are thinking about me. Maybe you have heard uh, similar things or other things about this. And there was a television program where this happened. Uh, there was an elderly lady, a little elderly lady in on that television program. She said before a young person, for a young and uh, strong person, he, she said to that young person, you, you cannot, you are not able to do anything, you are weak. Look, you are surrounded by unhappy situations, things and other things and keep your arm and I will uh, stretch out your arm and I want to lean on you. And so he was not the, she, so he was not able to, to keep his arm and to hold her. And she said to another person, you are so good, you are so strong. So um, to the other person she said, you are able to, to really uh, hold me. And he could do it, he could with one arm hold her. Often people say, if you say something good, about others, to others, then this influences the other. He can do better, he can, can have better results, he can even more uh, become more friendly. There is um, a Russian um, He's telling about a story in a Russian, um, in a Russian book where um, a children's story where an animal is talking to a crocodile and the crocodile wants to, to eat that other animal. But the other animal says, you are friendly, you are like my grandma. Although you are my grandma. 
And the crocodile says, no, I'm very evil, I want to eat you. And the other says, no, you are so friendly, you are so nice, you are like my grandma. And the crocodile answers, no, I'm, I'm bad, I'm evil. And the other one says, oh, you are so friendly, you are so nice, you are my grandma. And the result of that conversation was that the crocodile did not eat the other one. He jumped into the water. He could not resist this paradox uh, conversation. Because a good word is transforming other people, the other one, and also even animals. And those of you who have an uh, animal at home or pets at home, they know that this is true. I don't know how it is about trees, but uh, one person told me once in the past, um, a person showed a soul to a tree uh, that had no fruit, and all of a sudden that tree got fruit. Maybe this is an invented story, but we know about ourselves when we come home, and people say good things to us. Even an aggressive and unfriendly person becomes all of a sudden peaceful and friendly. And if we come to work, our working place, and the others say how they appreciate us and how good we are and praise us, then we want even to work more. And then we get overloaded. And if other people say to us, oh, you made so good, so well, and, uh, and the other person is doing overtime and working overtime and even more overtime, I just want to explain that good words will give uh, strength to others, will strengthen other people. <coughs> and bad, bad words will have the opposite effect. If people say to another, to other people, you have been always like that, you will not um, have the victory, you, you will not make it, and so on. And we know that words can transform us. And you know it from your life, and I know it from my life. And this is a general fact in life. And through this I want to confirm again how much we depend on the opinion of other people, our um, reception, our acts, are depending on what we think about ourselves, our perception, our acting, and we think what, think about ourselves, what others think about us. I think this is uh, a devilish circle, and we should come out of this circle. Last Saturday I spoke about an equation and this equation um, is my meaningfulness or my importance equates my result or what I 
I achieve, what I do, what I achieve, plus what others think about myself. And this is not this or that, it's as well this as well as the other. Der Mikrofon ist wieder weg. Das Mikro von Katja. We start doing something. We want to work to receive respect and love, a good relationship we want to achieve. We all the time we try to do something to achieve this. We want to respect ourselves and at the same time we would like others to respect us. Someone might have achieved a lot in his life, some president, for instance, he can think well about himself, but if in his, in his circles, Others think positive about him, that it is good to be president. There is a joke, I have told it already here before. A Jew became a president in the United States. And he is uh, celebrated and inaugurated. And there his mother is, his Jewish mother is sitting there. She is sitting in the first row. Katja Lauter. Katja. And besides, yeah. okay. and the President of the United States is now all of a sudden the most important person in the world. And this is such an important moment for the, for the mother. And this mama turns to the right to talk to the person sitting next. Do you know this person that is standing in the front there? And this person says, of course, I know this person, ma'am. Do you know this, this, her, his brother is a doctor. This is, seems to be more important. In America there was a joke that a Jew should be a lawyer or a doctor. So it's not so important that this Jew is becoming president, but his brother, that is more important. Those who have been, who grew up in Jewish families, you know what I mean. That is sometimes, that is how our parents sometimes educated us or behave toward us. No matter what you achieve, there is always more to achieve. Who, who knew that could, this could really uh, bring about trauma? 
it is true that this can bring about traumas. So this moves us to uh, to act in a special way, or it can also happen that we withdraw, that we mostly tell tell us two things. Oh. I'm so bad, I'm really worth nothing, nobody loves me, nobody estimates me, nobody accepts me, it's better to stay alone. And then there are two possible exits. Why do I live? Or I um, really drown in self-pity and am even proud about having self-pity. They are not understanding anything, thinking this. And the second possibility, the one who withdraws, could say they are all, they are all idiots, they do not estimate me. Um, they do not need me, and I do not want to be together with them anymore. And also this reaction does not lead to anything good. This equation, which we should destroy next Saturday, I, I want to remind you about this, my importance, is or equates is like what I do with what I have achieved plus the, the opinion of others. And this equation leads us to think, I have to do this or that, and I'm obliged, so to say, I'm obliged to do this or that, I have to um, be successful in making this examination, because otherwise I'm not a good student, and then I do not, then I will not have a good reputation, or I have to be a good preacher, otherwise people could have a bad opinion or a bad impression about me. I have to do this or I have to do that in order to achieve something or that my parents are proud about me or are satisfi satisfied. Everyone in, of us has this kind of thinking, I have to do this or that. But it is not, not good if we remain in this equation. Instead of saying, I have to, I must, we say, it, it would be good, it would be good, we could say. If my parents would be, if my parents were satisfied with me and happy about me, but this is not um, defining who I am. It would be good to have a good result from the examination, but I'm not obliged to do that. It would be good to recommendable to uh, to to have a good sermon, but it's not universally obliging. How can we how can we come to this thinking um, it would be good, it would be right, or from thinking I would like to do this or that and not 
thinking, oh, I have to, I must do this or that. How can we change our thinking? Coming to the to the basic things, we want to change our thinking, not thinking what others think about ourselves all the time, but looking to God. What is God thinking about us? Because we believe that God is our creator and he has created us in a very, in a beautiful, um, in a beautiful, complete way. Perfect way. The first human beings were wonderful in a perfect world. They lived in a perfect world, in paradise. When God looked at them, he said, super, super well made. That's how we were created. In order to be super good in God's eyes. But these first human beings, Adam and Eve, they, they sinned and they were kicked out of this perfect world. And they were no longer so perfect um, and good like before. But God did not abandon people. God loves people, God loves us human beings in the world. If you have read the story, you know what happened. From the moment onwards, since the moment um, man sinned, God started with uh, with restoration. In order to um, place man in a restored world, and God used Noah, Abraham, Isaac, the twelve sons of Jacob, Moses, Aaron. He used Joshua, the people of Israel, King David, Solomon, Samuel and Elijah. He used the prophets of Israel, the judges and good kings, in order to bring people, in the end, um, to Yeshua, so that Yeshua could be born into this world, so that he could come in his flesh, become a human being, so that the Word of God could be with us, so that this flesh that, that did not know any sin, that was pure, completely pure and free from sin, but was able to suffer in order for this flesh uh, to be crucified at Golgotha, so that the precious blood of Yeshua could be poured, could be given for us, in order to restore, to give restoration to the value of man. We fell from the throne of God, from the podest, from the um, but Yeshua came in order to restore us, to to change us, to change the world in which we live. In, in Him, God decided to give restoration, to restore ourselves in such a way as only God wanted to see it, to have it. Without God we were in darkness, but He is the light. Without Him we were full of sin. We, from Him we receive forgiveness from Him. And 
in him we get this importance and meaningfulness. If you have never done this, then turn to Yeshua and say to him that you need him, that you receive his forgiveness, that you want to receive his forgiveness, that you want to be forgiven and that you want to receive new life and that you want to follow him. When I ask you a question, what would you answer if you were asked, are you worthy, worthy enough to live in the kingdom of God? What would you reply? Imagine life here on earth is at has come to the end and you are standing before the gates of heaven. Maybe you think it has only to do something with Christendom, that these gates are only to be found in Christianity. No, this thinking is also Jewish. But in Christianity, at the gates of heaven, Often Peter is standing there, and in Jewish thinking, Abraham is standing there, often. And then the question is asked, why should I let you in? What did you, how did you deserve this, that's all that I would let you in into heaven? How would you reply? What would you reply? I have done so many good things, so many good works. I don't think this would help because there is judgment coming also. I don't want to um, frighten you, but, but I want to mention a few scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2. We read Ephesians from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Yeah, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Ah, we read from verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, with which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. <coughs> Think about it. Do you come into heaven because of your justice? because of your good deeds and good works, um, because you have become a president, a lawyer, or a good man, or because you work um, bec uh, on a farm in agriculture, or because you are an engineer or a good uh, salesperson. Do you get to heaven because you had many friends? Or, or do you get to heaven because your parents were very happy about you and satisfied with you? Or because your children have achieved so much in life? Read what is written here. For by grace, from God's grace, independently what you have achieved, from what you have achieved, independently about, uh, from what other people are thinking about you. In, eternally, in, et in eternity, this is not important. It doesn't play any role in eternity. Mm. 
we are placed in heaven from grace, from pure grace, by faith, by faith uh, in Yeshua and not of your, ourselves, not because of the opinion of other people. May it be our enemies or our friends or our relatives. This, is, mm, this does not matter. And we read from Titus, Titus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to which but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. You cannot uh, creep up, uh, approach to it yourselves. You cannot work for it, it's not because of your deeds. You never could do enough uh, good things in order to be there, in order to get there, in have, to heaven, or to become perfect. You only need one thing, be, be, or uh, one, one person, it's Yeshua, turn to Yeshua. Turn to Yeshua and you will have the ticket in to get to heaven. And you will have many additional gifts or things. And now we read first John chapter four. First John chapter four. verses 9 and 10. But th by this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. You are loved by God in Yeshua, through Yeshua, without condition, without doubts. He loves you so much, so much that Yeshua died for your sins. That is a great love, unconditional love. This is um, defining your future. This is also what uh, makes your presence. I want to read a list about uh, of some things that God is saying about you when you believe in Yeshua. Only a few things I mention here. And all these things are confirmed by the scriptures of the New Testament. I am a child of God. I am a friend of the Messiah. I have eternal life. And no judgment. I will not be judged. Um, I am justified. I am accepted by God. I am unified in unity with God. I have received the Holy Spirit. I am the temple 
I'm God's temple. When I say I, I mean you can you can personalize this. You say say this about yourself. I am redeemed. I have been bought by a high price. I am a member of the body of Messiah. I am holy. I have a direct connection to God, direct access to God. I belong to God. I am redeemed. I have been bought from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Messiah. Satan has no power um, upon me. I'm redeemed. I'm saved. I have been forgiven all my sins. I have received complete forgiveness of all my sins. I am a just person. I have um, uh, I have been delivered, liberated from any judgment. Everything is working out for my good. Nobody can put shame on me. I cannot, I'm not uh, separated by the love of God. I'm uh, founded in the love um, in the Messiah. I am hidden in God by the Messiah, through the Messiah. And I know that God will perfect His work in me. My home is in heaven. I have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in me. I can count. I can trust God and count on His mercy in, uh, in different times and His help. I'm born of God and the, the, the enemy, the devil, has no right to touch me. I'm connected with the vine of the true Messiah. I was chosen so that God can act through me. I'm a messenger of Yeshua. I'm a new creation. I'm a co-worker of God. I was created to do good works, to do good deeds. I can do all things in Messiah, Messiah because he strengthens me. This list is not yet complete, and I'm not sure if you can remember all things I've mentioned here, but this is what you are when you follow Yeshua. Believe in him and, and uh, turn to him and stay with him and then you will find your true importance and how meaningful you are. We will continue next week and go deeper in this teaching. But this is it for today. And remember how, what you are in Yeshua. Remember how God sees you, not your enemies, not your friends not your family, not the people with whom you work, not the people with whom you study, not the people in social networks, not your neighbors. Remember what God thinks about you. Because this is the maximum meaning for you. And may the Lord bless us to send in this truth. It will be continued next week. Shalom.